What is going on everyone? It's Sync from Breaking the Clutch. Hope you guys are having a fantastic day. And I apologize for the late upload. Was uh, doing pretty much Pokemon raids all day on campus. So I decided it was enough of that. I needed to get back to business. And I came up with uh, with this video based on a lot of your guys' feedback from previous videos. So I do thank uh, anyone who did make this comment. I was waiting for the right time to put out a ranking of leaders kind of thing. I wanted to wait until all the leaders were pretty much out. And I know we do have two more with Awakening of the Nightmare, but that's pretty much a separate, complete separate DLC, and that's not gonna be out for probably, I think, till September, um, or September, maybe? Yeah, so right now, up to this point, I'm gonna go ahead and rank them, and then we'll do a final evaluation of the entire game uh, once Awakening of the Nightmare comes out. But um, without further ado, let's jump into it. I've put these, all of our, our leaders into four tiers, right? And, um, and tier one's gonna be the best, and tier four I wouldn't touch, and this is gonna be in a competitive scenario. If you guys do disagree, please let me know down below and enlighten me if you have um, a different strategy that you use with, with this particular leader or any of the particular leaders. So uh, let's start off with tier four. I'm only putting one leader in tier four, one that I don't think belongs in any sort of competitive scenario and, or competitive combo, and I would say that that is Isabel. They have tried to adjust her. I just don't think that her leader abilities will ever be at a point where they they change a game or they ch like they, they manipulate a game in, in, in a way that, that we haven't seen before from her. I think her, she's just very plain. There's not a lot of things going for her. Uh, again, if you do disagree with me on that, I know there are a lot of people who love Isabel, but I just, I'm not seeing it. I think there was one time where in one of these seasons and Isabel broke into the top 10 and on the leaderboards, can't remember what season that was, but uh, I've never seen it again, right? And that's probably the only leader where we haven't seen um, a, just a few of them in the top 10. So I think that goes and speaks that Isabel is just not at that point um, yet. And I don't know if it'll ever be. I don't know what you can possibly buff to make Isabel um, viable. But let's go ahead and push on to tier number three. And I've only got three leaders in this one. And these three leaders... I can, I, I almost want to put them in tier two, but I just think that there are better options for them. So um, with that said, tier three is going to consist of Kinsano, Cutter, and Anders. Let's start with Anders real quick. Anders has Sentinels as her, her main uh, focus, and I, I just think there are better options for building killers in the game. I even think the Brute Brute jumpers are better options than um, than that because you if you use that with a shipmaster or something like that you can teleport them in teleport them out um, especially with reavers and wolverines getting the buff that they have as well air is just not the place to be right now at least in my opinion I could be wrong but I'm just I I think that there are just better options for building killers and again with that reaver and wolverine buff I'm not touching it um, Anders is very fun to play with but it is not my cup of tea. Uh, the second one's gonna be Cutter. I'm not seeing a lot of Marine pushes anymore, um, and that's really where Cutter thrived. You, you would push Marine with him in the early game and then transition into like a Cyclops, uh, Cyclops, Wolverine, Snipe kind of play, and you'd be the counter to everything. Uh, I, I haven't seen Cutter being used that way in a long time, and I think there are just better options to go than that Marine rush. Um, in the beginning, if you guys disagree, let me know, because I know Cutter's also a fan favorite. Um, and then also we've got Kinsano, who uh, is probably one of my favorite leaders uh, to, to play with in the entire game. Um, I, I like Kinsano. I like the Flame Rush. I really, really love the Flame Hogs. Uh, Inferno is fantastic, or at least at one point it was. Uh, actually, it was really overpowered at one point, but it. I love, I love Kinsano. I just don't think there's a place for her in that competitive tier, which I would consider tier two and tier one. Um, I, I could be wrong, but I'm just not, I'm not convinced yet. So let's move on to tier number two. And again, from tier two to tier one, I think that all of these are viable in an, a very competitive stance and they belong in some sort of variation of combos. I would not disclude them at all. The tier three and tier four, I would disclude from having them in my in my, in my composition of, of leaders. But uh, again, let me know what you guys think down below. So tier two, I've got the one and only Shipmaster. Uh, I wanted to put him so badly into tier one, but I think that there are just a couple other leaders that are that have ascended and they've taken um, control of that. Shipmaster's fantastic. I have nothing bad to say about Shipmaster though. Um, the ability to teleport, extract, displace units, and then Locust Reaver Ball. I mean, there's a lot to go with with uh, with Shipmaster. The hit and runs. I, I love Shipmaster. Probably still will be one of my leaders that I use this entire season. Arbiter. Arbiter's enforcer play uh, is is phenomenal. It was what helped Pat Ryan and myself uh, stop the forge 
the overpowered Forge Hog in the previous season, and we found a very sweet combo with that. Uh, and it was able to, again, to stop the Forge Hog, it was able to stop Serena's um, ice cream truck, and we didn't see a lot of players running it, but it was a fantastic combo, and we might even push that one forward into this one, because I know I know Pat loves his enforcers. Uh, on the Phantom side, I've seen Phantom Hunters be a thing, but aside from that, I don't know if Phantoms are really that good. So Arbiter does have a little bit of a weakness at that point with the Phantom. It's just a wasted leader ability at this moment. Of course, uh, someone might be able to come up with a, uh, a situation in which you could excel Phantoms. I just haven't seen it yet, so I'm going to hold judgment on that. I'm just going to say that the Phantoms aren't the greatest thing yet. They possibly could be, though, in the right hands. Uh, Forge, now that he got that Anvil nerf, I think he's in a good position. I struggle on what you would transition into him with, though. Um, and I think that's kind of where he, he becomes a little muddy. Uh, maybe you, you transition into that Cyclops Snipe or Cyclops Wolverine, and then you're, you're the counter player. Uh, but I, I don't know, because well, if you transition with vehicles uh, to Warthogs, I, I don't know, are Goss even viable in that situation? Uh, I, I don't know. So I'm going to put Forge in Tier 2. I'm not going to drop him to Tier 3, just because he does have that Forge hero still, and he's still very good with that early Jackrabbit play as well. Atriox. Um, it's going to be the next leader, right? And Atriox has always been very good. They did nerf fortifications. They've been nerfing shield generators, and I don't think they've been nerfing shield generators in the proper way, but that, that could be a separate video. Um, so Atriox has been hurt a bit, but I still think there is a place for him uh, amongst these uh, amongst these top leaders, and, uh, and I never would discount the old king. So Colony is going to be next. I love Colony. I don't play as Colony, but I love the premise of Colony. The Skitterers, uh, the Skitterer Engineer uh, Chopper combo is a very great play in the beginning. You've got the Goliath um, Skitterer Rush. I think Skitterers are really what make me want to push towards Colony uh, being in Tier 2. Um, again, let me know what you guys think because I, I really thoroughly enjoy Colony with the uh, with the Skitterer action. I think it just adds a different, um, a, a different side to the game that we haven't seen in that particular um, with that particular unit, I should say. So the next one's going to be none other than the, blah, 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 none other than the big old Johnson. Uh, yeah, Johnson. Just he's a good leader, very good leader. Uh, I don't think he launched overpowered or anything like that. I think he was just he's a very good leader all around. His leader hero is uh, it, it heals a great amount of units, and and the Mantis kind of have a play sometimes, but not all the time. Uh, but I think if you get that early Jackrabbit play, and then you, you mix in a couple Mancises here and there, and then you really focus on that, that Wolverine play, again, I think that Johnson has a place in Tier 2, but more towards the bottom, in my opinion, uh, of that Tier 2 bracket. The last one is going to be, or the last one I should say for Tier 2, is going to be Serena. Serena got that nerf of, w which I think was, was necessary. She got a nerf where her Cryo and her Seismic, uh, seismic Blast I almost said Seismic Toss like it was a Machamp or something, but Seismic Blast. So that got nerfed, and it doesn't wipe out armies of 80, which is great. Um, but I don't know if it's... if it's I don't know if, if I would consider her too powerful these days. I think there's one more thing that needs to be nerfed with Serena, and that's just a cool-off time for, or cool-down time for that ice cream truck. Um, but other than that, now that they nerfed that, she's still a very competitive player, especially in the early, um, early to mid-game. Late game, she kind of falls apart there though because the gl the glacial the glacial storm or whatever it's called that doesn't really do anything. Um, actually, I would just upgrade cryo two times and then say forget glacial uh, glacial storm. So again, I think she kind of falls to the bottom of the barrel of the tier two just because of that nerf. But it was a necessary one. I just I, I'm just still a little bit conflicted on where in that in that tier two bracket I'll put her. I think personally I'm pushing her towards the end of it, but she, again, any of these tier 2 leaders, I would absolutely consider putting them in my strategies. Now, on to tier 1, which should be apparent at this point. I think Yap Yap the Destroyer is, uh, in the right hands, the probably one of the best leaders that you can utilize. Uh, I think it's also going to be one of the most difficult ones because you have to do a lot of microing. Um, for instance, if you're going to spam those those uh, cannon fodder, you've got to be able to send those guys across the map, pick up as many supplies as they possibly can. You've got to micromanage five, six, seven, eight of them, and then do it in a way where you don't overcommit with them. And then also you're able to uh, upgrade your units because you were able to micromanage so well by picking up those supplies, picking up that power. Um, so again, I think at the right hands, Yap Yap is going to be 
a deadly, deadly leader. Um, and that's why I put Yap Yap in tier one. Jerome, Jerome has never had a situation where he hasn't been a great leader. There, there was a time with the um, with the OP Jerome Mantis play. I think if Jerome would have launched with Mantis as tech two, uh, or just a weaker, I guess, or a longer cool time cooldown time with the Mantis, he probably would have been fine. And I and they that's really the only thing I nerf with with Jerome. Omega team is still very good. Um, so I'm gonna keep Jerome in that tier one. That early Jackrabbit play is, is great as well. Um, and during Salvo, I think is what it's called. It's deadly. Uh, so again, I like Jerome still in that tier one bracket. Um, and I I think he's always been that good. So I'm not I, I haven't really moved Jerome out of that top tier yet. Um, and then the last one who I think just kind of edged in with that 250% boundless siphon boost, um, which is a passive power, uh, is Decimus. Decimus has a lot of great passive powers, and when you combine those properly, it leads to a player who can kind of sit back, doesn't have to really micromanage too much, or macromanage too much, I should say, um, and you just you end up building off of that, as opposed to his counter, which is Atriox, uh, where you've got a lot of great abilities with... Um, with uh, I can't I can't remember what it's called uh, Atrox Bulwark that's what it is uh, with that one where you've got to time that properly so there's a lot of microing with um, microing macroing with um, with Atrox and that's what makes him such a difficult leader but tier one Decimus I think like just because he's he's got a shit ton of passive powers you're able to just sit back relax and you're able to focus more on on what you're doing so you don't have to really worry about those passives um, and I think that's what pushes him into that tier. Um, you can really focus on the game while, while an Atrox has to focus on a lot of different things that are moving. Um, and that's why I would put those guys where, um, where they're ranked. So if you guys disagreed, which I'm, I can probably hear that a lot of people typing out right now that you disagree with where I've placed some of these guys. And if, if you're an Isabel fan, like I, I understand you're struggling. Isabel hasn't really been that good. Go ahead. Light, light me up and tell me that Isabel is the best leader. If you guys do uh, agree or disagree, though, all jokes aside, please let me know. I'm very curious. If you want to use this kind of ranking system, Tier 1, Tier 1, or Tier 1, Tier 2, Tier 3, Tier 4, uh, please do so if you want to rank them 1 through 14. Uh, go ahead as well. I'm very curious to hear your guys' feedback. And again, thank you guys so much uh, for tuning in. And uh, and real quick, I want to say thank you guys very much for tuning into the live stream, uh, the two live streams that we've hosted in the past week the one for Yap Yap, I think on the night that we live streamed, we had 1,300 individual uh, unique users at one point. I'm sorry, not at one point in a um, in a video, but we did have 1,300 unique within the four hour period that we that we live streamed, and that was great support. I think we had about 120 ish was our was our top hit for people watching, which is much more than I would have expected to come out. So again, thank you so much. I will try to put these things out in advance. Um, and in the future, Pat myself plan on doing one live stream a week. He'll do a live stream. I'll do a live stream. That way we're not spamming the channel. If you guys do want to see us do more live streams, I'm open to the idea of, of, um, of doing them. I just don't know if I want to post them to the channel because we do like doing our daily uploads of these type of commentary uh, videos where we get to, you know, directly talk about stuff that you guys were interested in. And again, I did pull this this uh, this topic from one of, or not one of you guys, plenty of you guys who, uh, who've been asking for it. Um, and it just felt like the right time to do that. So again, your feedback has, uh, has led to that point. So if you are interested in more live streams, you wanna see more live streams, please let us know. We will take that feedback to heart. If you don't wanna see any more though, you know, let us know. Again, we accept all feedback. Thank you guys again so much for watching. Hope you guys have a fantastic Sunday night. Again, apologize for the late upload. The Pokemans were calling, and, uh, and we'll see you guys tomorrow with another video. Take care.